On today's episode, everybody always talks about how much a 12.7 liter Detroit leaks. This little guy right here will probably help it leak a little bit less compared to what it's doing now. So let's get started. If you got a 12.7 Detroit 60 series, you might want one of these. Make sure you get the gray one. Let's roll. And uh, that's what actually moves up and down and pushes on the spring. Um, those head bolts are probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to get out. And a JB hook. Hey. Oh, that was nice of you. 19765. So that is a wrap. What do you think? You good? Every state is probably going to be different. Okay, we just got back from the pool and T Dub's lasagna is ready. Oh my goodness. It was good, babe. Oh, thank you, babe. Yum. Scrub it. Papa and Gigi are here. Oh, hey, guys. Hi. And boots, of course. She's looking right at me. Hi. Look at him. Hey, hey, hey. Isn't that cool? Can I hold him? Hey, Trevi, I can't get rid of cool. He's dancing for me. He's Can coming I? at me. Oh, right. That lasagna was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. So now we're going to go put a gasket on a Detroit. Wish and I'm going to put some kids to bed. All righty. Love you. Love you, too. Be careful. Thank you. Beautiful sunset tonight. All right. Got a couple tools, a nice DeWalt. Should make it a little easier. Before we get over here and get this 12.7 Detroit uh, oil pan gasket replaced, we need a uh, five gallon bucket, actually two of them. So we're gonna go Harbor Freight. Because this truck just had a oil change, so that's brand new oil in there. Man, it's a pretty sunset. So we wanna recoup some of that, filter it back through, put it back in. Okay, here we are, back at the shop. Got our oil pan gasket. Let's get that pan down first. We're gonna lay down some degreaser. Let a little, little bit of crud drip off from a 99 12.7 Detroit. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and degrease it a little bit. I'm gonna use Super Clean right here with a couple of Scotch-Brite pads to go ahead and clean up the surface once I get the pan down. You might want a scraper also, if someone put some silicone on there. Um, the, Detroit, I'm about to find out, but the uh, the actual gasket's a lot different than the one that was on my Cummins. The Cummins actually has like cut out holes for the bolts and stuff, and it it goes like into the pan. So we'll see about this one, but let's get down there and degrease it a little bit first with some super clean. Okay, so we have gotten our black gold out. Seems like Detroit's always turned the oil straight black, they say. You're gonna need to get it up on a little bit of wood for it to get under the lower drain plug. There's a drain plug on the side. You want the bottom one to get all that out. You need to get it up on a little bit of wood to have that clearance. So, got that clearance, wait for that to drip out. Then we'll start getting these bolts down on the pan. And one more thing, the uh, drain plug has zero metal on it. It had a little bit on there when we first did the oil change when we first got it. We've ran it a couple times, probably put 50 miles on it. Let her idle for a long time, so it would have had a little bit of metal on there if something catastrophic was coming apart in there. So that is a good sign. So a little bit of a uh, bright spot, but let's get that pan down. See what the uh, bottom end looks like too. Okay, so from the get-go, I have a little bit of a problem, I think, because it seems like it's molded. This was a black one, I would believe, like the Cummins was. This is kind of how the Cummins was molded. So. I don't know if I'll be going to the parts store tomorrow or what, but inside the actual um, pan, which we're gonna clean out, there's no metal, so that's good. It's just a little dirty. That's it. Okay, liquid gold, but we're gonna try and see if that gray one fits on here, but it seems like it's molded, but maybe you just have to tie it in there, you know, but see how it has those flat pieces? And this gasket seems to be in pretty good condition, so. I don't know, there were a few bolts that weren't super tight, but I'm gonna try it. Okay, and just test running it, it does work. Fits in there good and it does protrude a lot more than the uh, factory one does. So that's why people probably say to get the gray one because look how much more it sticks up. So yeah, let's clean this oil pan up. Um, 
get all the gunk off the sides, and then we will put it back on. Got the pan all clean, but I am having a heck of a time with the uh, gray gasket. I've watched a couple other videos. They say it's the best one. Um, I can't get it to stay in the groove when I get all the way around, it pops off the other side. So I don't know about that. Got a little bit of oil on my face, we're good. There you go. So I'm gonna try it a couple more times and massage it, but these guys just uh, kept working at it and it stays in there. I'm just worried about, worried about it popping off when I'm putting it under the truck, but we'll see. It's so definitely a better gasket. It's, it's more, uh, it's about two millimeters thicker, I would say, it stays off, so it smashes more. So we're gonna keep trying at it, but it definitely is challenging. So don't feel alone if you're doing it also to get that gray gasket to stay in there. Okay, before we put this back on, we have to clean up the surface around the sides. But we just wanna take a look at our uh, bottom end here. And it doesn't look bad. I don't see shavings, I see good everything, but you can't really tell until you take those caps off. You really look in those uh, bearings, but hey, it's looking good. And that right there, doo -doo -doo -doo, that's your dipstick. <laughs> cool. It's funny, it's red inside, kind of like a Cummins. All right, let's put this back together, but first, let's clean up all this. Even the oil pickup tube was pretty dang clean down here, so that is another good sign. Okay, guys, the gray uh, gasket got, gave me a black eye. Not really, I got some oil in my eye, but... Um, it took me out. Yeah, uh, I don't know how. I don't know if I was used a heat gun and heated around those uh, corners, but I had it sitting in there just right, dry. Cleaned up the whole top of the uh, or the bottom of the um, crankcase of the block, and uh, just barely tapped the um, dipstick going in, and it took off one side and it made the whole thing come out on one side. So I was like, and I already put the oil pickup back in, so I had it kind of stuck in. I didn't want to take the oil pickup back out. So I tried to kind of maneuver it around. It took about an hour, did it like three times, took it out, cleaned it all off again, put it back in there and uh, no. So I don't know how you guys have done that gray one before unless you used a heat gun and like heated it up and got it around every corner before you put it in. Maybe that's what I have to do. Maybe that's what you have to do. But uh, the black one replacement seems like it, it would just fits right in the grooves. It's, it's like pre-molded. So if you do go buy one of these oil pan gaskets, um, don't get a black eye like me. Go for the, uh, the black one, I don't know. Uh, or the a new black one might have more cushion to it, but the gray one is dang near impossible. So it's gotta be a trick to it, and I'm pretty sure I'll find it out tomorrow with some other guys from the shop if they've ever done one. But uh, yeah, I, I got defeated. Took about three hours and kept trying, kept trying. Mm -mm, not happening. So uh, we'll try again tomorrow, and uh, we got something else in the morning. So let's get some sleep, clean up. I'll see you in the morning. Good morning. We are back at it. And uh, yeah, like I said last night, first of all, the gray gasket won. Second of all, um, we got a dry van load. So that's a new yes. thing. It uh, picks up from 8 o'clock to 3 p.m. So I'm going to go get that Look first. This car. This Look at that car. car. Oh, it's a Hellcat Challenger. Oh, but um, go pick up this load. Get it on the trailer, doesn't deliver it tomorrow, and then maybe run a cement load if they have one. because uh, it is a beautiful morning. It does look like the race car. And then uh see if we're gonna go buy a black gasket or if there's some way to make that thing work with a heat gun. I'm gonna talk to the buddies, the other guys at the shop, see what their input is. But let's go get this drive in. I had to fix the flag real quick, and we haven't driven this thing in forever. All right, I haven't driven this thing forever. Where are the witch wipers? Are there? All right, let's go. I love you, Baba. Love you, <laughs> All right, let's go pick up a drive van load. <laughs> Said on <with> the horn. <laughs> Beautiful. 
beautiful morning. The sun is coming up. The morning dew was on the windshield and on the grass. those comments let me know if you've ever replaced a gray uh, oil pan gasket and how that went for you or is it just me who knows let's get this one pre-tripped fired up it's a sound I haven't heard in a while Woo. my own dry van clicking in some air to those tires and that Hendrickson, Hendrickson air system. Feels so weird to be pulling a drive in, <laughs> but I like it. Uh, 
12.7 Detroit's uh, oil pan gas heat because it's kicking my butt. There's Harley Davidson Greenville right there on the right, it's right below the sun. And our pickup is right up here, it's 10 miles from the house, uh, right by the airport. So let's get there. And I haven't been this way on 85 in a while, but uh, they are still not done with this off ramp right here. They're getting closer. We got a lot of rock right there, gravel and dirt to fill in and looks like that bridge is getting almost done right there. And that's what they got to finish to get that exit fully wide open. So that'll help a lot of this traffic once it uh, gets done, but not there yet. And it's kind of crazy running the same uh, repetitive I'm grateful for the work like crazy, but to run the same lane over and over again, a dedicated local route, um, you don't really go other, other directions on the highway, so I haven't gone this way with the semi for a long time. And we're not going too far, right up here to the airport, but it just feels good to run it, you know, like I was going up to Pennsylvania or something. Here is that exit uh, when I was Uber driving for a while. I would hang out at this exit sometimes because it's right outside the highway, the airport. There's an international right there for Greenville, Carolina International. 500 feet on Phillips Road. I think it's past, no, maybe it is this one right here. Uh, yep, 250 feet, 150. Is this Phillips Road? It looks like it. But yeah, I would uh, hang out here because Uber would keep you in an airport queue and let you like only stay inside that little airport waiting list. I would rather have, uh, there's an engine just sitting in a, a couple engines just sitting in a cage. Uh, I'm waiting in that queue, so I would always sit out there with QT so I would have options for both the regular rides and the rides that were uh, from the airport. So let's see what we got here. It's up here on the left. I don't think I've ever been down this road before. Shelter Drive, 600 feet. Avert over there. Let's see. No, I changed my mind. I have been over here before. I actually got sent here the wrong to the wrong address once, and the place was across the way over on exit 60. But I double checked it last night because I didn't just use the apps telling me what address we were supposed to go to. I actually typed it into my uh, Apple Maps, and it gave me the same place. So that's a good thing right up here on the left. Open appointment, eight to three, so let's see what we got. I think it's this, no, that's definitely not for trucks. Yeah, Aiken Chemical, that's it. Wonder what they're giving to, it's going to AutoZone, so. Oh, we got one truck in front of us. Let's wait out here on the street. Not make a traffic jam. All right, let's go check in. Get my trusty old pen, and now that I've seen this place, I have been here before. I picked up, so I don't know uh, when I'd have to look at the old videos, but I've definitely picked up here before. Let's go see what they got. That's crazy to see this right there. Oh man. Okay, pretty quick uh, paperwork. They already gave us our seal and our paperwork. They said back in on this side over here and then come in and count your pallets and then sign with the person who loads your trailer and you're on your way. So cool. I haven't opened dry van doors in forever. All right. She's in there. Let's go get in there. In the door, now we're gonna start that green APU. There you go. That thing hasn't ran in a while. So get that to go, get, keep that sleeper cool, and uh, wait to get loaded. The green APU is keeping us cold, and we gotta go count our pallets. Okay. 
kind of crazy because you can't see all the pallets. So I said, is there 21? He said, 23. I said, all right, <laughs> let's go. That was a 35 minute from arrival to uh, departure. That was pretty nice uh, getting loaded right there. I don't mind it at all. Let's get back on 85 for a little bit and then get back home. Okay, that dry van is dropped and that gasket is hanging right there. My buddy Tays gave me a renewed confidence in the fact that those are just a complete B to get in there. But he says lay, lay them out in the sun, get them warm, be a lot easier. Um, he said he's done plenty of them. I said, okay, I'm giving it another whirl. Uh, we don't have a cement load yet, but we should have one in an hour or so. So might as well get this going. I also have a heat gun, get a little bit warm. Just get it in those grooves and uh, yeah but the, he did say gray ones are way better than the black ones so if you're doing this grab the gray and it can, can be challenging okay guys we changed the clothes we got out of the truck we heated it up uh gray ones definitely better everyone says it all the guys at the shop said yep that's what you want and um so big word of the wise the heat gun let it sit out in the sun for a while um get it warm and that will let you have it, uh, what's it called, malleable, so you can kind of put it in the grooves, but I had it too warm, so at the very last uh, groove, it was kind of kinked out, so I let it cool off, it went right in, and then I put it up there, and uh, we're going to run it a little bit, get it warm, and uh, let, let's see if it leaks anymore, because it was leaking pretty bad. Put some boost to it, run it around, air conditioning's ice cold. The good old FLD is getting there. Let's back it out, run it through some gears, see what she's doing. All right, but yeah, new gaskets on. Go with the gray one, just warm it up. Oh, pressure's holding good. Oh yeah, we are good to go. Manual windows, that nice tint. And one more step on the Freightliner. Oil pan gasket, the gray one. Definitely not an easy thing to do, but is doable. Use some heat. I should have done it last night before I got frustrated. Um, stretched it out, didn't use any heat. Got it on first try with a little bit of warmth. Heat gun, put it on there. A little bit too much warmth. Cooled down, fit right in. And we'll check for leaks. Nothing so far, but I expect we'll check it next time. We'll come back out here, see if we got anything. But everyone says that gray gasket is beautiful. Works great, so okay. Because you don't want that going to the DOT. Stop it here, get some fuel. We got Mike and Mackenzie over here. Where you guys heading to? Back to Spartanburg? Yeah, going to Spartanburg, pick up a load, going to Greenville. There you go, Greenville. I love like Greenville. Well, you guys have a good weekend. Good right, to see you guys. Okay, we are fueled up and we got a chicken taco from QT, so we're going to get fueled up ourselves. But uh, that was awesome meeting you, Mike and Mackenzie. Uh, rolled easy back to Greenwood. And we're gonna get this last load in and then start the weekend and then deliver our Saturday load tomorrow. So get a little uh, salsa soul on my taco and then I'm gonna get going. So let's get this going and um, back in the K-Dub. And then I'll get, when I get back tonight, I'll look underneath the, uh, the freight liner because I ran it pretty hard, got it up to temperature, kept Jake breaking, hitting it all the way through the gears. Uh, so hopefully that'll get some crankcase pressure and we can see if it's leaking because it was definitely leaking pretty bad. It would leave a little puddle like that big. So we'll see you again. And then I forgot to clean up my space when I was there. So I'll go throw some cat litter and clean up where I was because we definitely made a mess. But yeah, Mike, Mackenzie, great seeing you. That is the gray versus the black. Um, it definitely protrudes a lot more. It really just smashes in there. So you just have to really make sure it's in each one of those grooves. And what I did is I got it in the, all the grooves. Uh, the front one kind of slipped out but I got the back one in perfectly and then I got the back of the pan in those two bolts, not tight, but just holding that where it couldn't move. And then I worked my way forward to the front and then as I got the front all in, I had a little bit extra slack. I let it cool down a little bit more and it pulled it in and then it went perfectly in. So 
blessing, blessing. And uh, thank you so much to the guys at the shop for helping me with the knowledge that they had. He's like, yeah, man, even when I just, before I start the process, I'll take the, the um, gasket out of the package, go put it in the sun or get a heat gun if it's cold outside. I said, cool, that's what I needed to know. I thought I was crazy. All right, that is Freightliner oil uh, pan. And let's finish the cement load and cut this video. T's and P's for that container. I don't know, T, uh, what is that, JCW? TCW? Pray that he gets home for the weekend and gets whatever's going on there fixed. Time to turn and burn. Let's make the turn and let's burn. There's our 95 merge. The highway should clear up a little bit from here now. We got a, our first way station was closed. I don't know if this one will be open or not. Um, it is getting later today on Friday, so people might be getting out of here or they might be doing some work because um, 4th of July was last weekend. But, uh, Walmart's smart. They parked under, well, he still will have his uh, truck in the sun, but I would always park under overpasses if I had to shut down for a little bit or if there's a big wreck, especially in this hot heat. It's showing 97 on the uh, temp, temp gauge. pretty good and then all of a sudden it just stops so I can see in front it's not stopped so something might have happened right here T's and P's we'll see if we can help if there is anything going on but in front it looks like it's flowing again so 94 degrees out here it's a hot one summer has finally come to South Carolina see what we got coming into Columbia we have some lightning I saw a big strike off to the left so we're gonna get a little rain right now Make it through nice and easy, get home. Here comes the boom. Oh yeah, the big drops. Headlights on. And the wind, ooh, that is some rain. Oh, goodness, please everybody be good drivers. Nice and gentle. Watch out, F-150. Okay. This little CRV right here is about a whole car length in front of the uh, <laughs> strip. So they're lucky they're both backing up. But man, come on, man. Who missed the gear? Let's go back one. Oh, the guy behind me is even worse. He's got a dry van. Oh yeah, we made it home. Let's get this cement dropped off and pick up our dry van. Okay, we are back and we've had time to let that uh, oil seep down, so let's check it out. And she's dry as a whistle, guys. So definitely the gray gasket did the trick and the FLD is happy. All right, let's get to the lake, drop our dry van load and start another video. So on that note, God bless you. Thank you for hanging with me. Thank you for giving me the courage to get that gray one in use some heat put it in the sun use a heat gun and hopefully it'll not leak as much as it usually did god bless you let's see you on the next one